Hey, mixing friends, thank you for joining me today. I want to offer you guys a simple trick that I've been fooling around with as of late. If you record drums and it happens to be in a small room, no matter what you do, you can set up room mics on top of room mics, put them in different parts of the room. If it's a small room, it's going to always sound like a small room. And of course, drums, the way I tend to like to hear my drums, is I like to hear drums in a big room. If you think about it this way, you don't hear drums the way we mic drums, you know? You don't hear drums with your ear directly against the skin or the cymbal, or whatever you may be miking. You hear drums in a room, and the room sound has a lot to do with the vibe you get out of the drums. So I've been messing around, and I think I found a cool workaround to try to get your drums to sound like they're recorded in a bigger room. So I have these drums recorded here. I had two kick drum mics two snare mics, two toms, an overhead left and right, as well as a mono overhead, and then I had three room mics set up. Similar to the overheads where I like to measure my snare drum to the overheads, I measured my kick drum to the room mics that were on either side of the kit, and this way the kick drum was the best representation of stereo center. So let's go into these room mics. I just want to zoom in to show you that even though I measured, I was a little bit off that's okay, as we can fix that. We'll measure here. Start about here. And that's about 32 samples earlier than the other mic. So what I did here was I took this room mic, this in-phase mono plugin by Waves, is just moving that track up by about 38 samples. I took an average between the two. I'll, I'll knock it back a little bit, keep it like at 33. And that's just helping the kick drum hit at the same time as the other mic to further give a better stereo image of the kick drum because that's what I want to be down the center. I don't want my kick drum kind of veering off the sides. It will smear the imaging a little bit. So with the kick drum now as my stereo center, I have these room mics sounding like this. Right, as you can tell, that's a pretty small room sound. It actually doesn't really sound like there's that much space around the drums at all. I'll bring in the close mic drums with the room mics. It adds a little bit of space, but not the space that I want to hear. So for a long time, I thought, how do I get this drum room sound the way I want to in this small room? And believe it or not, I wasn't getting the sound that I wanted to hear just because of the order I had my plugins in. A lot of people talk about drum room mics. They say, yeah, crush those drum room mics, really get the energy up. Let's, you know, let's hear the energy around the drums, around the room. Crush those microphones however you want, and you're going to get the sound that you want. So I would do that, and even though the energy would pick up, there still wouldn't be that space around the drums that I was trying to go for. What I would do is, I would put the compression first, and then I would put the reverb after. And then I realized, well, what if I pretended like my drums were actually recorded in a big room, and that these room mics were in fact in a big room? So you see the mental switch there? I put my reverb first, got that space around the drums, that decay that I want to hear, and then I compressed that, and my friends made a huge difference in the way it sounded. So let me see if I can emulate this real quick. What we're going to do is, I'm just going to put an 1176, little CLA, before the reverb, kind of like how I would do it before, and we're going to hear the difference. We'll go all in, fast attack, fast release. Let's crush them beyond recognition. Here we go. There's that classic 1176 crushing the drum room sound. Let's see what happens if we put the reverb on it. Okay, so a couple things happened for me. Number one, the symbols are overtaking the compression and it's making the compression do things that I don't like. That's number one. 
Of course, you could EQ before you hit the compression. However, this is how I used to do it. And I would get this kind of sound and hearing it now, there's things left to be desired. So let's try this. Let's first get the room sound that we want. Let's take away the compression. Let's take away the verb. Here are the dry mics again. This plugin, by the way, Slate Digital, once again, the Verb Suite Classics, love this plugin because it's, as they say, it's not just one reverb, it's a whole bunch of reverbs. As you can see, I don't have the biggest decay at all, 316 milliseconds, but it's doing what I want it to do. I do have some EQ going on in the reverb plugin itself. We can turn that off. just kind of taking out some low end probably to get out of the way of the close mic kick I'm actually gonna leave that off for now I may choose to put it back on later we'll see how it affects the compression later on down the chain so now I have this room sound that I like let's put that up against the drums Okay, so now there's some space going on around the drum kit. I'm starting to hear as if it were in a room. Let's try this one more time. I'm going to bring the uh, room mics in and out. When you take the room mics away, it's almost as if the drums become 2D. It's quite a drastic difference. Let's try the other sound we had before with the drums. Let's put the compression back in and let's see what this is going to give us. There's a lot of energy there, no doubt about it, but it is incredibly cymbal heavy and for me, I want the oomph <laughs> of the room mics, if you know what I mean. That's what I'm looking for. So again, let's take away the compression before the reverb. Reverb first. Then what am I doing? A little virtual tape machine just to give it some vibe. Like what that's doing, adding some color doing what it's supposed to do, slate, killing it once again. Now, look at what's going on in here. We have the FG76 just further giving those microphones a little bit of vibe to them. Then we're going into the SSL style console, hitting it a little bit above its default drive setting just to give it a little bit more. Little EQ, and then of course the FG stress, which is going to bring out the energy that we're looking for. So let's hear what this is doing now to our room mics. Let's first leave it out. Okay, now we're starting to hear what I want to hear. Hopefully you notice that there's a lot more bottom end to the drums when we process it this way. I'm hearing it almost as if those room mics were recorded in a big room. It's pretty awesome. So on the EQ here, I'm high passing at about 90 hertz because I don't need all that extra rumble of the kick drum to get in the way, not only of the overall drum mix, but also the bass guitar. You put a bass in there, it's going to get drowned out. On this particular kick drum, there was a lot of 140 hertz, so I pulled that out a little bit using the bell curve there on this EQ. Then I took out a little bit of 350. Let's hear what that sounds like. Just kind of pulling that out. For the harsher part of the cymbals that's kind of making the compressor work harder than I'd like it to is this area of like 3.5K. Let's boost that to hear it.
that's just a little bit obnoxious of a frequency to me. Again, small room, those frequencies are gonna build up quite a bit. And then of course, I'm just shelving some high end away, just because once again, I don't need all that sizzle. It sounds nice, but I don't need that much. <laughs> You may notice when I boost that, the compressor starts to work a lot harder. I'm EQing it so that I see the compressor working harder more with the actual shells than with the cymbals. Let's take a look. I'm going to boost the high end one more time, watch the compression work harder, and then I'm going to bring that boost down and start to attenuate until I see kind of the shells of the kit start to really work the compression. Let's check that out. See how the shells almost get smaller sounding? And I take it away and now the shells are doing most of the work. So that's the EQ before the compression. Another part of the sound that I think is a really big factor right there. And then, of course, we have FG Stress, which really needs no introduction. This plugin sounds unbelievable. I think people are still trying to figure out if they can tell the difference between the Slate FG Stress and the real distressors. Good luck to them, that's all I'm going to say. Here's our settings here. We have a slower attack time, bring out the transient of the drums, and then fastest release. Let's hear what that's doing. It's giving a lot of level, of course. A little bit of a faster attack is going to lessen the actual transient spike. However, I wanted some of that punch in there, so I left it not as fast. Kick drum gets a little smaller sounding to me. So that's it, that's the sound right there. Sounding pretty cool to me. Let's hear the room mics now with the close mic drums and we're gonna take it in and out. Here we go. The drums become so flat sounding, it's unbelievable. So there you have it. Friends, thank you so much for tuning in once again. I hope you enjoyed this one. Of course, if you have any questions about this at all, leave a comment down below. Let's have a discussion. Don't forget to also like and subscribe. It means a whole bunch. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.